I'm going to move on to my good friends at Safari. So I have with me today, I believe I have Kate Crawford and Trisha Kennedy. Trisha, there you Sorry, are. Lots of buttons to push. Hey, I know. Longtime friend who has been reincarnated as like the super evangelist now. Second life. Yes. Is Kate joining us or am I, or do I not need to look for her? She's here, I think. Which I think Doug I'm is doing. I'm here. Hello, Lonnie. Hey, Kate. Hey. Okay, great. Well, let me just announce first your award to the two of you. And you got to tell your all your friends. So we chose Safari as a Tech Imperative Award winner. So you notice the Tech Imperative Award is in recognition of leadership, building a foundation for K-12 digital learning environments. Because we are so about getting organized and not being random samplers of all things of the 10,000 million apps, about 10,000. I'm, I'm exaggerating when I say a million. But there's so much stuff out there and so many just shiny, distractive objects that one of our key messages as learning council is get yourself organized, right? Please. Um, and we can help you if you really need. Um, but really, because you're providing districts with an interoperable repository. Now, not, not, not everybody knows what that is, and I know you guys are going to explain it. But it's essentially the place to go to get all your stuff. Um, and then offers teachers and students equitable access to all of that pre-created stuff so they don't have to recreate it in their Google Docs. And then file it in this folder named something, something, and a subfolder named something, something, and a subfolder over here named something, something. And then hope their seven-year-olds can go to folder, 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 folder in a very nested subfolder way. Um, but it's accessible, right? Um, so I'm going to have you guys um, carry on. And we have a slide deck here for you. First, introduce yourselves and then tell us everything. That's what we're going to do. And we're just so uh, honored for the award. And we're, we're accepting it on behalf of Safari. Both of us are actually many years customers of Safari, but new to working to support the organ the company itself. But um, as customers, we can testify that everything you just said that Safari Montage does is really true. And we experienced it as customers. So we're gonna spend a little bit of time today sharing with your with your participants and viewers and you all, um, you know, what our experience has been as uh, as clients of Safari and now the work that we get to support. So I think Kate's going to, um, we'll introduce ourselves when we get to our parts and Kate's going to jump in and start for us, I think. Okay, good. And yes. then Kate, let me give you remote control okay. so you can forward your slides. Ooh, okay, excellent. so you, you have control. Awesome. Well, thank okay. you. I think it just means you go down here towards the bottom and yeah, where, where it lights up the navigation at the bottom on the left. I am not seeing it yet. Let me try my arrow keys. Nope. No, I'm not getting that. You have to click on it and then it shows. Click at the bottom yeah. left and it'll show your little arrow forward. No, nope. I'm on a Mac. Would that have anything to do with it? Yes, I'm just saying <laughs> technology. <laughs> yeah, let me, I'll just, I'll be here in the background. I'll forward them for you or one of us. Okay, will. thank you. Okay. Thank okay. you, Lonnie. You're welcome. All righty. Um, as we are all aware, and, and again, thank you, as Trisha said, um, you know, we were former customers. Um, I, in my former life, as I like to say, I retired in June of 2022. I was a district administrator, director of digital learning and media services. And one of my main passions was to ensure that life was a little bit easier for our teachers out there and providing one enterprise level resource such as the LORE, the Learning Object Repository, as Lonnie just mentioned, in order for teachers to quickly search for content that standards align and is high quality was critically important, not only during the pandemic, but also now that we've seen this entire 180 into more um, instructional options, right? Via asynchronous learning or synchronous learning. So there are many ongoing issues in K-12. And Lonnie, I don't know if you need to click. I apologize, it's not showing up, but no, that's fine, no worries. Um, and, you know, as I just mentioned, 
my passion has been finding ways to minimize the stress of teachers. So between the pandemic learning loss for students, the never having enough time to plan and ensuring equity of resources for all students, the demands of the job are understandably overwhelming. Teachers are searching for engaging content that is flexible enough to meet the needs of individual students. And as, as I've mentioned, and as you've heard today, it's a huge time investment that can be overwhelming. In my experience working with teachers to meet digital instructional needs, they each have the following goal, access to one enterprise level platform that has a cohesive, equitable standards aligned curriculum that's flexible and provides them with a means to monitor progress while focusing on student pegs and their individual needs. I know this slide represents prior data, but as Lonnie mentioned earlier today, the new survey reports 40% of teachers are spending a minimum of approximately 20 hours a week searching for high quality instructional content. And if you could jump to the next slide, Lonnie. This is just a quick graphic, um, another yet shocking effect of the pandemic. And according to the Learning, Learning Council survey data pre and post pandemic, from 2017 to 2022, the time teachers spend searching for digital resources with a minimum of six hours per week has increased from 26% in 2017 to 77%. And this year's report suggests that those percentages are roughly the same. So Lonnie, if you thank you, ma'am. Uh, learning management systems are not designed to help teachers compile, organize, and remix learning objects used to build instructional courses. This was definitely a struggle for a district leader um, who was trying to push out a learning management system during the pandemic. One of the things that I was most frustrated about is that, that we were rolling it out, we were teaching teachers how to utilize that learning management system, but there was no content within the, within the courses. They were empty shells. And so oftentimes teachers are going to start from scratch from a learning management system. They have no actual learning content within those courses. The Safari Montage Learning Object Repository, or LORE, is an enterprise level solution and it delivers a new class of user experience, which ensures that educators and students have access to a continuous stream of curated high quality content via federated search, which is truly tailored to their needs and preferences. A flexible lure saves teachers 50 to 90 percent of the time typically spent on arduous searches across multiple platforms or within basic search engines. So let's talk about equity and supporting a high quality curriculum. Um, teachers can rest assured that they can create equitable, memorable learning opportunities for all students. Key equitable supports of the lure include support for English as a second language students, reading and comprehension via Microsoft's Immersive Reader, personalized instruction support of different learning modalities, individualized with specific emphasis on pacing, and parental invol involvement support with academic content, which Tricia will explain in more detail shortly. Y'all are going to love that. Really exciting things going on. Teachers can really be weighed down, as I've mentioned, um, with having to learn, you know, not only build lessons, find the time to curate those resources because maybe they're in multiple platforms or or it, in my uh, former district. And I know Trisha and I've laughed about this, too, the, the teachers pay teachers issue. Um, some of you may be shaking your head at the mention of teachers pay teachers. You understand that struggle and what that means um, and for at a district leader perspective. But. Safari's so lore is seamlessly interoperable with the leading learning management systems on the market, enabling teachers to share that content and lesson playlists via our lore lesson presenter or LLP um, easily with students on a platform that they are already familiar with. Additionally, training resources and support is provided to teachers at the beginner, intermediate and the advanced levels in order to build playlists and create lesson plans for students. So as we've reviewed, Safari's, uh, Safari Montage's lore um, offers teachers a means to simplify that never ending search for high quality standards aligned, equitable instructional content. Additionally, the lore provides a means for districts to curate meta tagged curriculum resources and content for teachers. So much like Lonnie just mentioned, instead of having all the curriculum pacing guides out in Google Drive, 
you know, maybe in some subfolder that maybe the curriculum coordinators forgot to share or post. We now have that just at hand, one click, one stop shop, if you'll forgive that that uh, one stop shop <laughs> um, phrase that we all like to use. But it is, you know, a, a very powerful tool. And 68,000 plus free open educational resources are available within Safari Montage or OER. Additionally, licensed content for the district or the school from all major U.S. educational partners via thin common cartridge is interoperable with the system. And it also provides a means for teachers and students to upload their own media or content via um, either a cloud-based service such as Microsoft OneDrive or Google Drive. And in addition to the OER content, there's also 16,000 plus segmented videos that are built out and segmented to ensure instructional chunking and ease of understanding. And those are customizable as well. So Tricia is now gonna go into more detail about the advantages our lore provides for districts. So over to you, Tricia. So uh, like Kate was saying, we wanted to share with you, you know, the things that we've found as customers of, um, of Safari and how that really addresses, you know, I've been able to sit in on most of uh, uh, most of the uh, meeting today, which has been awesome, and um, uh, we've been talking a lot about that teacher time and and the teachers and we, us needing to free up their time for what they do best and what they need to be doing, which is really driving the student learning rather than it being something that um, you know them having to spend their hours on looking for content, looking for resources, and. And Kate shared that with you, but we wanted to also um, share with you just kind of how, how Safari does some of those pieces. Um, the, the, some examples of what's going on right now in various districts. And thank you. Um, thank you, Leilani. I see that you got, you got me moving. Um, so um, one back, go back one for me for just a second. Let me make sure I cover a couple other things that, that are um, yeah, right there would be great. So um, Kate shared with you a little bit about teacher workflow and those needs and how Safari can address that, that one-stop shop idea. Um, and then um, Safari also offers uh, an ability to do that analytical work to make meaning from multiple data sources because you are in essence, you're centralizing your digital content and resources into the repository. And therefore, data can be collected by learning object and brought into simplified reports that go across all of those vendors. So we have that ability too. But what I'm going to focus on um, uh, for a few minutes with you, though, is that promoting of instructional fidelity, the vetted resources aligned to standards, and the benefits of that um, content. And so, like Leilani, you can switch to the next one for me. Too bad, Leilani, that it's during school hours and we can't do a drinking game for every time we have to say next, next slide. Um, so uh, let me share with you, like I said, the examples, just a few examples of some of the work that we're doing and, we're, and Kate and I are thrilled to support. And um, I will stop here because I didn't mention it before. Like Kate, I am recently retired after 37 years um, in uh, K-12 public ed. I know, I know it's shocking. I started like Kate did. We started when we were five years old and, you know, we were prodigies. But uh, no, after 37 years, I was with Gwinnett County Public Schools for all of those 37 years, which is a very large district outside of Atlanta. Um, Kate also is outside of the Atlanta area and the district she was with. And um, uh, I spent most of that time actually in the curriculum department, my years in the district office. Um, and I moved from oversight of curriculum and instruction at some point to, uh, to oversight of our uh, digital conversion initiative, basically. And that's how I became that point of contact for Safari Montage as a customer for almost 10 years. And now I'm, work, I'm supporting that work with Safari. I'm thrilled to be supporting that as a, as a consultant. So let me tell you about three examples of some of, of the work that we're doing right now. The question that I, I know that districts are struggling with, because I hear them, but I also was struggling with this as a district leader, is how are we supporting our teachers by providing vetted, effective, research-based content curriculum um, to address, really, student equity? 
but at the same time, maintaining our teachers' professionalism and their autonomy. You know, how can we better centralize instruction, which has been a topic we've been talking about all, all morning, right? How can we create those full lesson paths for our teachers? Um, again, a need brought out by Leilani and um, Learning Council survey results. But at the same time, honoring our teachers' professionalism and letting them do what they do best, which is address the needs of those individual students. So Safari is partnering with districts and states across the country to try to really help address those needs. And the examples I'll share today are um, a curriculum hub at Fulton County, Georgia schools, a statewide curriculum resources in South Carolina addressing equity and access across the districts and um, instructional plans and student facing content for all of the Chicago public schools. So if there's anybody out there participating and or viewing later from Fulton and from South Carolina and from Chicago, hi and thank you for letting us share a little bit of your story today. All right, next slide. So Fulton County, Georgia um, actually surrounds the city of Atlanta. Um, they recognized a need for, Kate mentioned earlier, parental transparency, parental access, to instructional information and plans. And that's really what drove the development of their hub. So you see a screenshot here of their public hub. It's for their parents, but it's actually fully publicly available as well. They used Safari Montage as their partner to do this because um, they were able to meet several criteria they had, including they needed a quick turnaround, quick delivery, they wanted to use their existing resources and they were already in partnership with Safari Montage and they needed it to be cost effective, don't we all, right? That's always a criteria. So for this parent and public hub, the parents are able to access each course grade level in the four core areas. They can see the full year of Fulton's, um, the Fulton specific learning standards. They have a derivative of the Georgia standards. They can see their, ch their children's instructional calendar or scope and sequence for the year. And then they can see the details for each unit and the timing for instruction. And for the parents, there's an in there are in-house developed videos modeling the instructional practices and strategies for each unit. They also, Fulton wanted to basically kill two birds with one stone. They knew they needed a teacher hub. And so their teacher hub has similar structure same delivery mechanism, but in that hub, they also provide district curriculum department. The district curriculum department has provided teacher-specific plans and vetted content for each of the units that the teachers can access through the hub. So that's Fulton County. Now let me share with you about South Carolina, and these are going to move fast, Leilani, so get your finger, finger ready. Um, so South Carolina Department of Ed is partnering now in developing a statewide system for high quality content. Next slide. So there's a case study. There's a um, note there of a case study link that you can go to if you want to or for more details around this. 75 districts participating, 780,000 students. The Department of Ed's goal in um, South Carolina, and they're also partnering with Microsoft to do this, so, so it's a, um, a Safari and Microsoft partnership. They needed to increase the number of high quality resources for their teachers to use. They wanted to create digital learning opportunities for students in the classroom and beyond the classroom, that idea of the hybrid that's continued now right past the pandemic. They needed to save their teachers time in planning and preparation common theme that we keep hearing, right? And they wanted to provide a, simple, a, a, a library of professional development resources for the educators throughout the state. So next slide. So they, um, have, they were, work, are working now in developing this with Safari because they were able to address those goals, but also some very specific requirements. One being that South Carolina needs to distribute a system of learning object repos repositories for each individual district rather than having a single repository at the state level. Next. They also need to be able to work with multiple learning management systems, as well as Microsoft and Google because their districts are using different platforms, right? Next. 
And they need to be able to distribute content from the state level that they are providing to the districts, but they also wanted to support the district selected content. And going back to that one-stop shop idea, they needed to be able to give the state content, but then the teachers also be able to move seamlessly into the district content. And, and the system allows for both of those to be housed in the Safari lore. And then finally, um, they are, wanted to, back one, yeah, they wanted to offer content aligned at the state level to the standards, but also provide those exemplar lessons and assessment items. And one of the things that I think that Safari is doing really well right now is providing those opportunities for curriculum resources, for teacher resources to get to the teachers easily. And so South Carolina is working on this right now. They're at the beginning stages of it with this plan, the plan for it being um, fully um, vetted in the near future. And so South Carolina friends, um, stay tuned for that. And so finally, let me share with you what, what's happening in Chicago. Um, Chicago had prioritized a high quality equitable curriculum for all of their students and all their schools and all their classrooms. And at the time when they started this development a couple of years ago, that wasn't the case. So they partnered with Safari Montage and with other content providers in order to develop a full curriculum. They call it their Skyline curriculum, driven by their district instructional framework. So the teachers now have easy, intuitive access to all of their curriculum plans down to the unit and lesson level, as well as assessments all tightly aligned to their standards. So the example you see on the screen here is the second grade language arts. It's in the Safari Lore Lesson Presenter. So this is the format that is offered through Safari for curriculum materials. And Leilani had mentioned earlier that a lot of our LMSs, that they generally don't have a real clean way to present teacher resources and supports. And so this is Safari's answer to that. You see up on the top right-hand side there, curriculum maps, the scope and sequence, pacing guides, and you can add other resources there as well. And then below that, you see the links into the unit plans and the assessments all aligned to standards. So next slide. Then um, the teachers can easily click into those units and move into the unit plans where Chicago has provided lessons like these for their scope and sequence. And these lessons include student-facing playlists of content and instructional activities. Let me show you that one in the next slide. So what you're seeing here is a student playlist and each of those blocks is, represents a content or activity for that lesson. So it really is a full built out learning path, including interactive, formative assessments, multimedia, et cetera. Um, Chicago worked with partners, the uh, some of their vendor partners in particular to build these lessons. And then through this platform, teachers can assign the student lesson playlist directly out to their students. They use Google Classroom in um, Chicago to do that. Um, but uh, the system has the ability to work with really any LMS or Google or Microsoft to push those uh, activities, those playlists out directly to teachers. But here's where it comes even more power is that the teachers can also very easily make a copy of that playlist with really just a click. And if they need to make adaptation based on their students' needs using that formative data that in real time, really. They can do that by making that copy and it pulls up these editing tools that are highlighted there for you. Um, and they can make those changes and then save their copy of their playlist and push that copy of the playlist out to their students without changing anything that's been presented or shared by the district. It becomes their own personal playlist then literally at a click of a button. So again, all of these pieces are really answering that original need that we mentioned, supporting teachers by providing the vetted, effective research-based content and curriculum for student equity that we know is so important, 
while maintaining that teacher professionalism and autonomy to differentiate for their students as they need to, taking those steps forward really to develop those full lesson paths. And I think Kate's gonna um, take us out from here. Thank you, Tricia. Awesome job. Um, yes, and just to summarize, you know, as we reviewed today, the lore is specifically designed to enable teachers and districts to curate educational learning objects. And much like um, Tricia was just giving you the examples of an entire state, South Carolina has adopted Safari Montage in order to provide districts with this type of quality content, but also curriculum guides, organized, something that makes everything, I think, in terms of lesson planning, much easier for teachers. And one of the things that my job entails is to work directly with Chicago Public Schools and having conversations with teachers there is something I'm really excited about because as we see the play, you know, they've had millions of plays on playlists so far this year. Of course, they had 300,000 students and 27,000 teachers, um, but it really has been something I think that's just, it's a game changer. Um, so we are just thrilled. Thank you for this award, this Tech Imperative Award. I know I speak for Tricia and I both. You know, we would have probably preferred to be on the beach in retirement, <laughs> but we were both very excited for this opportunity to work for Safari Montage and to um, just continue the good word. So thank you so much. Any questions? Okay, I'm opening it up for questions. If anybody wants to ask questions of Safari Montage, how does this work? Where do I find you? Those kinds of questions. Or just, you know, what's happening? Tell, tell us what's happening with you and why, why this is of interest. <clears throat> and if you don't ask a question, then I will. Um, I'll put myself back on camera. Sometimes it's important to pause like you do in a live classroom and just wait for people to raise their hand. <laughs> raise your hand, please. Um, I know we have quite a few people on here, so I'm just seeing if they're gonna do that. I have a Max Clark. Um, let me find you and unmute you and you can ask directly. Hey Max, you're good to go. Okay, thanks. Hey, Lonnie. Been a while. Hi. Um, I just had a question with Safari Montage as to whether or not that would uh, replace our need to, to purchase like a textbook series that we traditionally do uh, for ELA math at the elementary, middle, and high school, like with McGraw-Hill or somebody like that. Um, Safari has a, a array of content, as, as Kate mentioned. I would say a lot of the districts that we're working with are also pulling into the Learning Object Repository other purchased content or other vetted content that they're using. Um, and, um, you know, the content within Safari probably doesn't, as in, a, in and of itself, have a lot of the teacher guides that come with those um, HMH or Savas or the other, um, the other vendors that are providing that kind of full core content. Yeah. Um, but I will say this, we do have districts who also have decided to do that on their own and using the content from within Safari. So there's not a one, there's not just a single answer to that. You would have to check, look at the, look at the content to see if it could meet your needs. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Max. Long time no see. I think we're yeah. coming to your state later this year. So we are looking forward to seeing you. Sure be there. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, so any other questions from the audience for Safari? And you can type them in or just raise your hand if you can figure out where the where you can raise your hand on your panel. Um, raise your hand. Okay, if they don't ask any questions. So, so I know there's been a lot of innovations within Safari. Can you guys speak to that? The latest, well, we latest a, things? We have a new version. Um, that is just being released and, of course, tested thoroughly um, that has simplified uh, many things for teachers. And you saw it when Tricia had up the slides for Chicago Public Schools. 
for both the um, course overview that has the streamlined, you know, pacing guide for teachers included. Um, a lot of feedback coming out of Chicago from teachers specifically on what makes the platform easier to use. And we've taken note. Um, I will tell you, and this goes back to the, my days as a customer, if I needed anything, I, I mean, I felt like Safari Montage was probably top of my list in service and support. And they work really closely with districts in order to customize and also to take to heart some of the feedback from teachers who are struggling finding things or who have just great feedback for us. So mm -hmm. um, another thing, too, that I will mention that I, fi I find is very innovative and I was so excited about when I saw it um, was just being able with one click to find additional standards aligned content. Instead of having to go into search, you're instead in a lesson that has a with the click of a button, just as Tricia mentioned, it will take you out to the search fields within Safari Montage and it automatically curates additional content that is specifically aligned to that standard. That was huge. So again, another time saver for teachers that has recently been um, implemented within the platform. Yeah, and I don't think that can be overstated based right. on our survey. Right. I, don't, I don't know if, you've been, if you were on during our survey, but the amount of time teachers are spending doing this and they're, you know, they're the teachers that are saying, yeah, I'll do it. I'll go digital. I'm, I'm with you. And then they get buried in an avalanche of work that just sort of rabbit holes them into like, I got to go find it now and, uh, and I got to put it all together and uh, right. And exactly. curate. And, uh, it's ridiculous. And unfortunately there's not a lot of leadership that is really asking this question, right? They're like, right. Hey, you do it. It's all free on the internet. You can find it. Right. Um, and then you can put it all together and then you can align it to standards and you can do all the back and forth traffic. And, and then and then if it, it's not fitting some kids, then you can go find more additional stuff. I mean, it's really um, not looking at that dynamic, right? Which is what you guys are answering. So that's why we gave you the award because we think okay. it's awesome. Um, so anything else you guys want to comment? I'm checking if there's any other questions for you. I don't see any coming in, but you can still raise your hand. You got two minutes. Raise your hand if you do. And I would just say while we wait on that, Leilani, you know, coming again, like Kate and I are right from practitioner into this support, the support roles we have, the things that we've been talking about all day about needing to be able to personalize content for students so that mm -hmm. they, we, teachers know, have the data to know what students need next and have that personalized path. I feel like Safari is far ahead in providing that in a lot of ways also, a formative assessments that can be embedded in those learning paths that then redirect students automatically to an intervention or extension as needed, giving the data back to the teachers, um, back to the school administrators, to the district level, across all of the digital content that's being used, not just having to use the reports from this vendor or the reports from this vendor, but being able to pull all of that data in so those real-time decisions can be made. And that giving the teacher resources, the district wants to provide the teachers with those supports. These are the strongest lesson plans. These are the content materials that we've um, spent the time for you curating. You know, all three of those really critical, critical points, I see those as being the innovations that that's where Safari is really focused right now really matching with what we're saying those needs are right now. Yeah, I like that. I like that. And I, I have to I have to comment on this one particular point in that you guys are operating in two modalities too. You have chunked content, mm -hmm. which is what teachers have traditionally gone out to the open internet or teachers pay teachers and stuff to find a piece, right? To sock in. A lesson, yeah. yeah. But you're also... Um, integrated into full courseware. Mm -hmm. So people like, I think Edmentum is on your list, Dreambox, you know, all those guys that do the animated sequences and, uh, you know, mind research with the little penguin and Gigi and da da da. Um, so you're in, you're, you're bridging both worlds, which is a very interesting thing because it's the first place to do that. Um, but the other thing is, is that like Max was bringing up, like, are, are you aligned with what the state's telling me I got to adopt as a textbook? The the humanity 
that we saw in the pandemic is that, hey, uh, we are seeing more clearly that every kid is different and that the state of humanity is complex. And our whole group teaching and learning thing that we did for centuries with books, right? It is not working. We can see it in real time. The parents are seeing it in real time, right? Because <laughs> they're sitting right behind their kid uh, live on the thing. So the, the question of of whether or not you need something that does this, this kind of automagical like tweaking, uh, slide this in for this one, slide that in for that one. There's no question, right, anymore because of that fact, right? The pandemic changed everything. So final comments. Well, I think that was one of the things I know personally for me as a district leader coming out of the pandemic was the the parental piece. The parents were very frustrated about multiple platforms. You know, they were having to jump from link to link. And, and that's why I mentioned, too, that having that one platform that seamlessly integrates with the learning management system was a huge step in the right direction. And of course, I would get phone calls from parents where I could listen for about three minutes and I knew their teacher was not utilizing either Safari Montage playlists or they weren't you know, sharing things within the learning management system. And it really became something that, you know, parents complain things happen, right? I mean, that was kind of how it was like one of the things that we really paid close attention to. Um, and I, I couldn't agree more with what Fulton County has done to offer that transparency for parents. And, and again, you know, it's all right within Safari Montage and it's something that, that has been a great benefit to them. Yeah, I like that. I like it. Well, thank you guys both thank very you. much. Hey, Trisha, thank you guys. Um, spread the news yeah. of your award. I think we, I think we're sending you the little logo and everything you put up. Awesome. That. Thank you yeah. for just affirming that we're headed in the right direction. Yes. Um, supporting schools and teachers is, is what Safari is all about. So you're, this is a great affirmation. You're welcome.